Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and also we open a lot of old school magic two letters today in the post. And um, this one is kind of special. This is from Mike from Canada, all the way from Canada to Amsterdam. I'm gonna open this one last. Really like the envelope. Very cool. And of course, the beautiful title, Tim the Enchanter. Sweet. Before you know it, I'll start believing that I'm really an enchanter. You know, you got to be careful with that stuff. Um, okay, let's start with this envelope. Uh, there we go. Let's see what's in here. No fancy bubble envelopes, nothing of that sort. Can we see a little... Little black card, what could it be? Pete Venters, it's not a creature. There's no power and toughness there. And, oh, it's Blight. This one comes from Richard. Now remember, a player in the Netherlands who was actually selling his Blights. Okay, how to open this Richard? Oh, okay, there we go. So I believe, yeah, it's just a play set of Blights. I, I think they're quite useful. And I also really like the art. And I think, it, in, I know it's been done before and, and it never really works fantastically, but in in a deck with four singles and four blights, I think that could be powerful. And I really, really like the art. I mean, look at it. Just this wasted land, really. Two black, just like a single enchant land. If target land becomes stepped, it is destroyed at the end of the turn. That is what I find so interesting about these cards. It's not destroyed straight away. It's always at the end of the turn. So let's say you have a Candelabra of Taunus and you can untap the land again. You can just look, use it again and again and again. It's not destroyed. It's destroyed at the end of the turn. It's not destroyed straight away. I always find it kind of, kind of interesting. It usually doesn't matter much, but in some cases it, it, it makes quite the difference. Okay, so thank you, Richard, for these cards. Beautiful playset of Blights. And then let's take a look at this. This is what it's all about. So post from Mike. Mike, I want to already thank you for these cards because you're just sending them to me. Um, and I think you wanted to help me with my revised collection, if I'm not mistaken. So let's open it up here. Nice, really nice, nice envelope. Very cool. Okay, um, and then we've got the cards in here. Let's have a look. I'm actually surprised how quickly this ar arrived because it came all the way from uh, Canada. But it came pretty quickly. Very well packed. Yeah, we can already see one of the cards. Wow, it's in beautiful, beautiful state, uh, Mike. Wow. Let me check it out. Okay, so it's a big top loader. And there we see another card. So there's a lot of revised cards in here. This is fantastic. As most of you know by now already, I'm trying to collect revised times four, and I've had a lot of comments, oh, are you also gonna collect Wheel of Fortune times four because that's ridiculously expensive. Understandable comment, but what I'm doing, I'm uh, the restricted cards, I'm only collecting those cards um, once because they're restricted, I can't play four of them in a deck anyway. So Cursed Land, let's take a look at this card here. Um, First off, beautiful, beautiful condition. Wow, Mike, I can't believe you're just sending these to me. Thank you very much for that. It's two black and two to cast for an enchant land. And, oh, I do see a little thing here on the um, on the rules text. Cursed land does one damage to target lands controller during his or her upkeep. Of course, the problem with this card, which is making it not so playable, is the fact that it's two black and two to cast. If it would have been I don't know, two black to cast. This card would see a lot more play, I'm sure of it. But I do, I'm do. i gonna put it here with my Blights. I think it's a nice, nice combo. Okay, and we've got more cards here. Just gonna really take my time for this, really gonna enjoy them. A Wall of Bone, one black and two to cast for a one four Wall with Regeneration. 
And I think the flavor text is really cool. The wall of bone is said to be an aspect of the great wall in hell, where the bones of all sinners wait for Ragnarok, when Hela will call them forth for the final battle. And of course, a wall of bone is made by Anson Maddox. I think he's, he's the best artist for black cards, personally. Wall of bone, okay. And an ornithopter. Zero for an O2 flyer. And I'm really, really happy with these cards because it's uh, it's completing a lot of play sets. A second Ornithopter. I think the Ornithopter play set is now complete. I This card used to see some play with uh, Unholy Strength. You put an Unholy Strength on here and then for one black mana, you would have a 2-3 flyer, which is pretty sweet. And, oh, two cards actually, a Helm of Chetsuk, and I think I only had one Helm so far, so I'm really happy with my second. It's my second or my third. What this does is one in tap, and you may give one creature banding ability until end of turn. So this one can be pretty powerful, actually. And then we've got a card that I think, you know, it's not really that powerful. Uh, Jander's Ring, six to cast, amazing how much it is to cast this one. And then you've got to pay two and tap it, discard a card you just drew from your library and draw another card to replace it. So this is just a really bad card, right? Unfortunately, unfortunately, it does have that Mox background, in this case, purple, and art by Dan Frazier, Jander's Ring. And then we've got some more cards here with the W on it. Oh, sweet, Nether Shadow. Another card that I only have one of, two black to cast. This is quite of an oddball card in um, the first expansion of, of Magic. Why? Because it's got such a unique ability. So first off, if Shadow is in your graveyard with any combination of cards above it that includes at least three creatures, it can return to play during your upkeep. So that's already pretty unique. Then another aspect of Shadow's unique. Shadow can attack on the same turn summoned or return to play. Right? So this one is pretty cool. I have been thinking about using this where in a deck with a lot of like bat moons and you know trying to figure out a way how to get creatures in my graveyard with I kind of have to laugh about it because I'm not thinking out loud. How can I get creatures in my graveyard? that um, I don't really mind being there. So I need some kind of sack mechanic, maybe with, with Falling Angel, uh, but they cannot be tokens because they need to go to the graveyard and they have to be on top of the Nether Shadow. So I, I admit it's, it's not easy to play with this card, but th th it's such an interesting card. It kind of invites me to, um, to, to brew around it, to build a deck around it. But um, yeah, just beautiful. Beautiful art in its simplicity, I guess. Art by uh, late Christopher Rush. And a beautiful condition. Another Nether Shadow. Wow, I only had one so far. Oh, -ho! so the Nether Shadows are now complete. Thank you, Mike. That is so sweet. Completing the Nether Shadows. Um, and we've got a few more cards left. I'm really enjoying this. Let's go. And we've got a beautiful flying carpet. Artifact for four, and for two and tap gives one creature flying ability until end of turn. If that creature is destroyed before the end of turn, so is the flying carpet. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And last but not least, let's see what card is this. Oh, the fast bond. Wow, Mike. Are you sure you just want to send this out to me? I mean, Fast Bond is quite... Oh, I remember we talked about this in the in the chat, but Fast, Fast Bond is quite an expensive card. Beautiful, beautiful art. Very epic art by uh, Mark Poole. When you think about fantasy, this is really a picture that, that you think about, isn't it? I like this wizard standing over the land, going to cast a spell on it. Beautiful, beautiful art. One green for an enchantment. Fantastically strong card. What it does is you may put as many lands into play as you want each turn. Fast Bond does one damage to you for every land beyond the first that you play in a single turn. So this is a very interesting card and you can do a lot of trickery with Fast Bond. 
If you've ever built a deck with Fast Bond, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And of course, I'm talking about an old school deck. Uh, wow, this beautiful art. I can't believe, Mike, that you just, you know, send this to me. Thank you very much. So definitely a shout out to you, Mike. Thank you for these beautiful cards. Also, thank you for to Richard for sending out these blights. Um, if you want to support the channel, let me just get this back in the sleeve quickly because it's... This is quite a valuable card. Thank you very much for this. It's actually my second fast bond. So I still need to get two more somewhere. Um, if you wanna support the channel, that's where I was at, I think. If you wanna support the channel, start by liking this video, give it a thumbs up. It's free and it really helps. Also leave a comment, let me know, have you ever built something with fast bond? What would you do with fast bond if you had a play set? And, um, uh, you can also subscribe, of course, if you're not a subscriber yet. And you can also become a patron of Timmy Talks and that way you can support the channel financially. And you can also join uh, our Discord channel. You can join the special Patreon tournaments and all sorts of things that we do. Uh, if you're curious, you can uh, click on the link that's probably appearing right now and you can check out the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Talking about Patreon, let's go and take a look at the end scroll with all the patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Let's go. Ich kann das Fingertisch zum Bakasin.